Hello everyone, now I will show you how to set up your Netgear router, R6700 AXS. And before I begin, I want to remind you that if you found this video helpful, please buy me a drink. Every pint of beer helps me in the creation of more valuable content for you. So the first thing that you will need to do is to turn on your router. Plug one end of the power adapter into an outlet and the other into the router. When the router is turned on, the power indicator will be lit. It may take a few minutes for it to completely turn on. Next, plug the cable from your internet service provider or from your modem into a special port. Each cable should be inserted until it snaps into place. Now, you need to reset the router to the factory settings. Press and hold the reset button on the router for 10 seconds until the indicator lights on the router begin to flash. Sometimes, the button is located inside the router casing to avoid accidental pressing. In this case, use a thin object to press on it. The router will reboot and the settings will return to the factory defaults. Plug one end of the Ethernet cable provided with the router into one of the LAN ports. and plug the other end of the cable into your computer's Ethernet port. Wait a few minutes for connection. Great, we've connected the router to your computer. Now, you will need to set it up. But first, let me show you another way to connect the router if you do not have an Ethernet cable or your computer does not have an Ethernet port. Connect the router to the power adapter and cable from your internet provider. This will enable Wi-Fi. If your router is new and hasn't been set up, your Wi-Fi network will be named after the router. Your router has a unique Wi-Fi network name and password printed on a sticker. Connect to it. Great, you've connected to the router. Now let's start setting it up. First, open your web browser and type in the website address that you see on the screen. Use the address bar instead of the search bar. At the beginning, click here. Then read Netgear terms and conditions and click I agree button. And click next. Click next again. If your router settings does not look like mine, it means that your router has a different firmware. I have created a video for every type of firmware. In the description below, you can find all links to them. First thing you need to do is set up a new password. The password for the administrator is used for logging into the web interface of your router. Pay attention to the password requirements. Write the new password in the first field and then duplicate the password in the second field. Next, select two security questions and write answers for them. You will need them in case you need to reset the admin password at some point in the future. On this page, you can customize your network name and password. Click Next. If your browser does not redirect after two minutes, reload the page. The next page contains the information needed to connect to a Wi-Fi network. If you are connected using the preset Wi-Fi credentials, it's time to connect using the new Wi-Fi credential. If you want, you can print them out. Click Next. If the router hasn't had an update in a while, the next page may be a firmware update. If the new firmware is not available, click Next. After updating the firmware, you may be redirected to the Netgear website, where you can register your router. You can do it if you want to. I'm not going to do that, so I'm just going to close this window. Log into the router's web interface again, if you were logged out of it. Enter the standard username admin and password, 
that you created a few minutes ago. Press sign in button. Close this window. In the upper right corner, you can change the language of the web interface of the router. To get the internet, go to Advanced. Set up Wizard. Press No. I want to configure the router myself. Then press Next button. On the next page, select the settings for the internet. In most cases, there are two options, connection with and without a login. Almost always, your internet connection will not require a login. All the information you need is in your internet provider's contract. If your internet connection does not require a login, or if you are not sure whether a login is required or not, select No. Leave account name and domain name unchanged. Select Get Dynamically from ISP in the Internet IP Address section. In the DNS section, select Get Automatically from ISP as well. If your ISP only allows Internet access to a specific MAC address, you will need to clone the MAC address of the primary computer. If you are unsure of these settings, choose Use Default MAC Address. Check again that your settings are the same as mine. And click Apply. In most cases, you will not need to clone the MAC address. But if you can't get an internet connection after the quick setup, I'll show you how to clone the MAC address later in the video. Now you must reboot the router. To do this, go to the router's web interface if you are logged out of it. Go to Advanced, Advanced Home, click on the Reboot button, and click Yes. After the reboot, wait a couple of minutes and try to Google something. If it doesn't work, check all the cables. They must be connected properly. Then log into the Router Control Panel again. Go to Basic, Internet, and choose Use Computer MAC Address. Click Apply button. And then, Reboot Router again. Go to Advanced, Advanced Home. Click on the Reboot button and click Yes. After restarting, wait a few minutes and try Googling something. That's all. I want to remind you that if you found this video helpful, please buy me a coffee. Every pint of coffee helps me in the creation of more valuable content for you.